Hey, hey, what is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well out there. And welcome to episode 4 of the little short mini-series that we have going here. And inside of this mini-series, we're trying to build out this chat application right inside of the middle simulator. And currently, we have this structure for all of our messages inside of these couple of sections, right? And in today's lesson, I wanted to talk about something called intrinsic sizing. And we're going to use this intrinsic sizing to provide these little headers up at the very top. So you can see we have this August 25th in the very light green, as well as August 26th down here. And so these couple of header labels inside of our table view, it's actually being created using one single UI label. And we're using the intrinsic sizing of this label to kind of provide the padding around the text inside of it. All right, so that's kind of what we're going to be working on in today's video. Let's go ahead and get started by jumping back into Xcode right now. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the lesson and welcome back to Xcode right in the middle. Uh, the first thing we always want to do is to just make sure our application is working by running the current code, which is this over here, view controller and view controller. Alright, so where exactly do we want to kind of start the implementation for today's video? Well, I want to modify the section headers up here in the gray to kind of look like this in the light green, right? And so the easiest way of doing that is to provide a custom view for these section headers. And uh, I'll show you exactly how to do that by going back into our view controller. Uh, somewhere down here, we have this method called a title for header in section right over there. And this guy provides us with the date formatter, the date string over here. And then eventually we return it. And that's kind of why these uh, strings inside of this section kind of look like that. And so instead of using this method, what you really want to do is to override this method called view for header in section. And the code inside of here, you can return any type of UI view you want. So what I mean is you can say let label equals UI label. This guy, let's give it a background color of, let's use something dark like black label dot text, see text equals some date string. And finally, I probably want to give some kind of text color of white so that I can see it. And then finally, we are going to return that label. So label, I'm also going to set something called text alignment on it. And I'll just center it inside of the uh, horizontal axes. Uh, once you run it, you'll see exactly what that does. So black background, white text, and centered right in the middle. Okay, so that's kind of good. And one thing that's kind of special about view for header is that if you have both of these methods implemented, you're actually only going to be using this one up here and it's going to completely ignore this method down here. All right, so you might as well comment that out. It's not going to affect your program in any way. And uh, now what I want to tell you how to do is I want to be able to somehow center this label or this label inside of this entire section area, right? So the only way that you can really do that is to provide a container view for the entire section. And then you want to center the label inside of that container view somehow. So let me show you how to do that as well by going back into view for header and section. And so inside of here, I'm going to create this thing called a container view. Let it be of type UI view, and we can return this container view at the very end of our code. Let me wipe out return label. And so this container view is actually going to contain our, uh, contain our label, so container view dot add sub view, and let's pop in the label over here. Okay, so that looks great. Uh, I believe if I run this, I don't think I'll see this label at all. But let's kind of see what happens. And there you go. Our label is kind of gone. And the way I'm going to actually center this label over here inside of our container is to provide some center X and center Y constraints. So let me show you how to do that by going back inside of here. And the first thing I probably want to do is to enable auto layout by setting this guy to false like that. So this guy sort of enables auto layout. You can think of it that way. And then for the actual label, I want to center it using the center X anchor and also the center uh, Y anchor like that. 
And the way you perform the centering is to constrain it equal to some kind of constraint. And let me just type this out. So container review, I want to center on the X anchor. And we might as well activate it while we are here. And for the Y anchor, we'll do something very similar. Container review and center Y anchor is active equals to true. And I believe I can run this and hopefully I'll see this black label inside of my container. And bam, there you go. The entire section is spanning from the left side over here all the way to the right side. And then our label is kind of inside of it over there. Now, uh, the next thing I probably want to do is to somehow increase the height of this section container so that I can get some padding on the top of this label. So there's some padding right there, right? So let's do that by going back inside of our controller here. And you can specify height for header in section. And I think I'm returning a value of 50. I believe you have to provide an override for this function as well. So let's just do that. And once you run it, you'll see that you'll have some spacing up at the very top there. And uh, everything is looking much, much nicer, right? We have our label being centered. And the only thing that we're missing here is the ability to kind of provide this corner radius for our label, as well as some padding that's around it. So you can kind of tell there really isn't any padding on this some date string guy, right? So how exactly do we provide that padding? Well, I'm going to actually create a custom label and then I'm going to give it a custom intrinsic content size. And uh, the intrinsic content size is basically the default size that you have for your label component. And you can actually increase the intrinsic size and it'll give it this padding that looks like that over there. And uh, let me quickly show you exactly what the code is for that. And it'll make a lot more sense there. So the way to do this is to, you know, somewhere inside of your project, you can create a custom class. So I'm just going to put it right above our code here just so that it's easy to see what's going on. Uh, this guy, I'm going to call it date header label. I think that makes sense. Uh, we're going to subclass the UI label component. And inside of here, you can provide an uh, intrinsic content size, give this an override, hit that, and just return some kind of value. So this expects you to return a CG size as specified right there. Uh, CG size has two properties or kind of parameters that you need to provide for it. You can give this value a 200 and 100 like that. Uh, let's kind of see what that does by going over here for the date header label. We can actually use it instead of the UI label down here for the sum date string. And uh, once you run this, the label should be a lot larger inside of your container. All right. So that's what it looks like with a width of 200 and then a height of 100 like that. So it looks really weird, right? And uh, the way to fix this so that you can kind of have the original content size, but a little bit larger is to use the super value. So let me kind of show you this code here. So let original uh, content size, and you just want to call super, which is the parent class. And you want to get the original content size by doing that. So super intrinsic content size. And we're going to use this and say uh, original size dot width. And we're going to use a value of, let's say 16. I guess that sounds like a good value for me. Uh, original content size height. And we'll add something like 12 there. And let's try to run this now. And you'll see that the uh, black background is a lot smaller and it should match the actual text inside of it. So what I mean is if I remove the date from the string, you'll see that the actual background will completely shrink along with the text inside of it. Okay. So that's pretty close to what we need to have inside of our application there. Uh, one final thing is to provide the corner radius for this guy. And you can actually provide it inside of this uh, override of intrinsic content size. And so let me say let height equals this over here. So let me grab this. And then I want to paste it in here. Uh, the height I will use right there. And then the thing about these labels and these UI view components is that 
the layer on it has a property called corner radius. If you want these UI view components to be perfectly round like that, you need to provide the corner radius of half of the entire height. So let me show you what I mean. So height over two. And let me try to run this. You should be able to see exactly what's going on. So it's not round at all. Uh, one reason is because you can actually say mass to bounds equals to true. And that pretty much is going to uh, make your rounded corners show through inside of your labels or UI view components. All right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, you can modify this to be a little bit larger, so 20. Uh, that'll widen the left and right sides a little bit. Uh, you can modify these values to be whatever you want, uh, obviously depending on your design, right? Uh, one last thing you might want to do is to shrink the font size down a little bit. So label.font equals UI font, and we'll use bold system font. And let me try to give it a value of 14. I think that sounds pretty good. It should match this a little bit better. And so once you run that, that's exactly what you have. So much nicer looking design there. And if you want to get the date string back inside of that label, you can do the exact same logic that we had inside of here. So you can kind of see we are provided with this section as well. Uh, what you can do is you can pretty much copy all this code. So I'm going to copy this and I think I need to re-comment that out. I might as well cut it out of the entire project. And up here you can say, let's see, first message in section, which is this guy. You grab it from your chat messages. And then this date string is what we should print out. For example, this is the date string there. And I need to, I need to set it somehow on this text label. So let me grab all of that code and I don't want to return the date string but instead I want to say something like label.text equals date uh, date string might as well remove that and I should be okay I believe I need to return nil there because uh, this function expects us to return something so if it's optional you can just return a nil and there we go our a little section headers look a lot nicer. We have this black background and uh, everything looks pretty good, right? Uh, one last thing you probably want to do is you see this method called a view for header and section. There's a lot of code inside of it. And typically that's not what you want to do because this becomes really hard to maintain after a while. So. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can put all of this customization code for your label. For example, the black background, the text color, the font size. You can put it inside of the custom class itself. So this is the custom class, date header label. That's what it is down there, right? Uh, one thing that you can do is you can override the initializer for super init frame. Uh, you want to call this guy. And I believe if you leave it like that, it'll complain about this required initializer. So make sure to click the fix. And then you want to take all of the customization, which is here. So let me take it over there. And you can pop it inside of the initializer. All right. And uh, the last thing you need to do is you don't really need to say label dot. So remove that, 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 and that. And uh, hopefully that works. Uh, I think you might have to specify the font somewhere else. So I think the font is not exactly bold. You might as well put it down here instead. And uh, the font should work out once you run your code. Uh, it should be a little bit thicker, but you know, if it doesn't work or if it does work, you can just keep it there if you want to do so. Now, the one last thing I probably want to show in today's video is to somehow fix the padding in the table view for all of your chat messages. So you can kind of see the padding over here is a lot nicer. And these gaps right there, there, and there, they're kind of large, right? Uh, you can go back to your chat message cell and somewhere in here is kind of where you're providing the padding. So you see top anchor is 32. If you change that to 16, I think things will look a lot nicer. Uh, you have to provide the uh, design that you want and the padding that you want over here and once you make the change it starts to look a little bit better 
you probably want to do some more customizations yourself, but that's kind of how you uh, get the look and feel that you want. All right, guys, that's going to finish up for today's lesson. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you guys learned something new. In the very next video, I'm going to show you how we can group together all these messages that we have inside of our table view and inside of our array. We're going to group it together using one of the newer functions inside of Swift 4. And uh, we'll see exactly how to do that in the next video. So hopefully I'll see you then. Bye bye guys.